One of the more magical features of Vue.js is the vModel directive that lets you set up a two-way data binding between your actual data source, in this case this email address, and the contents of a form control, in this case this input over here. So by adding vModel email to this field, you can see that as I go and change the value here, it's automatically updated down here. So we can change this to Elmo at sesamestreet.com, and you know, and everything sort of stays in sync. Now it's easy to just accept this as this magical feature of view there to make your life easier and move on with your day, but I think to fully understand some of the component communication best practices in Vue, it's really important to understand how vModel actually works under the hood, because it turns out it's actually quite simple. So to get started, I'm going to get rid of this vModel directive and I'm going to replace it with a simple value binding, where we're telling this input that we want its value to be bound to our email property. Now if we head over to the view dev tools and make a change here, maybe we set this to cookie monster at sesamestreet.com, you'll see that this actually does update in the browser. So the form input's value is still bound to our email field. The difference though in this case is that if we go and try to make changes here and type something else, you can see it doesn't reactively update in our data. So the changes that the user is making are not being sent back to our component and we're not able to keep those pieces of data in sync. Now, a common way to think about this that is actually a little bit incorrect is to think that the view component's data is now sort of out of date and we need to somehow catch up with the data in the DOM. Sort of like the DOM and the view component state are sort of equally important and they're always trying to catch up with each other and make sure that they're synchronized. The reality is that the view component state is actually always the source of truth. And a good way to demonstrate that is to go ahead and change uh, this newsletter toggle from false to true. Watch what happens. When we change that to true, Vue is forced to re-render the component based on the component state, and all of a sudden that email address that we typed in that didn't get synchronized to Vue gets completely thrown away because the email address that we're storing in data is actually the source of truth. So how can we go ahead and make this stuff actually stay in sync and implement this sort of two-way binding? Well, it turns out what we really want to do is we want to listen for changes on that input and then either accept them, reject them, modify them, do whatever we want uh, before we store those in the view components data, forcing a re-render of the component. I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go back to our input tag here and add an at input event listener, we can receive the input event and then after we receive it, uh, we can use that to make some decisions and make some changes to our actual component state. So the simplest way to get this two-way binding stuff set up again is to just do something like this dot email equals e dot target dot value, where e dot target is the actual input itself, and the value is the value that it holds after the user's typed something into it. So if we go ahead and save this and head back to the browser, you'll see when we go and make changes now, everything is staying synchronized again. Now the interesting thing about this is that the decision making about what value to actually commit, what value we actually want to use for the email address field, all that happens right here. So we're not forced to just accept exactly what the user typed, we can modify it if we want to before we store it in this property, and that's going to be reflected in the DOM state. And that's how you build things like input masks in Vue. So say, for example, we wanted to force the user's email to all be uppercase. Well, when they actually go ahead and type and we receive the value that they typed, before storing that in the email property, we could uppercase it by calling to uppercase on the value. And now if we go ahead and clear this out and start typing, and remember, I'm doing all this typing in lowercase, atomatexample.com ends up fully in uppercase letters. So that's how vModel works under the hood in Vue. It's as simple as a prop that gets sent in that specifies the value of the input, and then an event listener that's listening for changes and deciding what to do with that new data. vModel, all it does is just take the exact value the user entered and store it in state. Uh, but there's nothing stopping you from storing a different value or modifying the value or doing anything you want because the actual component state is the source of truth, and the actual DOM is always going to be re-rendered to match that source of truth anytime the component state changes.